Okay, we have converged. Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars, is here with his little camera, phone, on BC. This is Spirit Cars, we're here, and uh, I was wondering today what we're going to talk about, so I think what we'll do, we'll just brainstorm a little bit. And we'll brainstorm about frames, and we'll brainstorm about chassis. I'm not going to get specific about anything, but you can kind of see uh, there's a lot of choices, a lot, a lot of things. We, we do a lot of things on jigs, but we do a lot of things just because it's a one-off, you don't have time, and it's not feasible to build a jig. So um, we just make it. Um, a lot of choice. You have a lot of choices. Here's a, a frame, a perimeter frame we just mocked up for 34. It's an old-style frame. Um, swoopy stamp rails, box rails. We've got. Uh, this is a. Square tube frame. This is, a, this is a jig from Model A. So you've got more straightforward. Uh, we got a 23 over here and a 27. You can take a look at these. This is a 27 built off a jig. This is for a 27 tall T, a one off. We've never built it to go under this particular car with. Uh, uh, it's got. Pro Street wheels and everything in the back. So, if you take a look at the difference between some of the welds here, you can see the welds on this one. This is finished. It's been turned over. All the welds are done. It's finished. This one, we don't know if it's even going to work yet. I mean, we got a good start on it, but you can see we've just tacked it. We've got cross members just tacked in, so we know what's going on. We've we've got body mounts already just tacked in. Well, the body mounts are mounted and welded in because that's where they're going to go. But we may have to take this apart and move it a little bit and do. So when you're thinking about your frame, you're thinking about your car, you're thinking about your chassis, um, it's got to drive, and you've got to be safe, it can't be falling apart. You don't want something that's just not safe at highway speeds. Um, but there's no one way to do it. I can start naming off just in the front end, you can have the spring behind axle, spring over, you can have a regular axle, you can have a, a drop axle, you can have radius rods attached to it, you can have a four link attached to it, you can do an independent front suspension, uh, elliptical spring, um, a strut setup, you can, there's just a lot of ways to do it, even on the rear end. Um, you put wishbones on the front, the old style, the rear end, you can have a nine inch rear end built, cut down. If you can find one that fits, say it's a 10 bolt Chevy that's narrow enough to fit under a hot rod car. Um, an 8.8, of .8, we used a Thunderbird rear end uh, that's a real nice independent front or rear suspension. Uh, Corvette, I'm building one with a Corvette. Now Corvette's real wide, so you're going to need to narrow your uh, control arms. Um, lots of lots of lots of choices. And once you make your choices, I mean, we. Again, we use a lot of jigs. It takes some bending equipment. You use a jig for nothing but putting 34 rails in and, and putting the boxing plates in. You've got to remember on certain things that uh, heat is going to warp the metal. So this needs to be clamped down. And if we just start running a hot weld in the middle of this without having to clamp down, it would take our frame rails and just twist them and bend them. Um, it's handy to have all these tools. I mean, a brake and a, a lathe and a, a lot of jigs. You know, what are they even for? <laughs> your mills and your drill presses. But if you look in here, nothing here is real super modern. We're, we're dealing with a lathe that's probably as old as I am, and that would be old. Not, I mean, we got some CNC stuff, we got CNC plast cutters. But think about how you want it. Again, we got tubes. These tubes here are for like a cross member. And the 34, we've got, I don't know what we got, two, three, four, 34s going. So this is a cross member, the cross member in the center section for our 34 here. A transmission cross that'll unbolt so you can get your transmission out. You got to think about that. If, if we don't have this unbolt, once you put your car together, 
with your uh, body and everything, you might not be able to get the transmission and motor out of there unless you pull the body up. Uh, this particular car has got, um, it's going to be for a straight axle or a dropped axle, but it, it'll be a, it won't be independent suspension. So when you, you start thinking about the chassis that you want, on top of a good chassis, I can build anything. I can build me a, a barbecue grill with a, with a wooden buckboard seat to drive down to, to the house, which I may do someday, or I can put almost anything on top of the chassis, but this is your foundation. And uh, research it. We, uh, these, these are ideas, sure we have some individual ideas, but we're not, we're not dealing with technology that's not been around for a long time. So make yourself know, I mean, this is just notes for us of what we do here. I'm, and there's certain things, we use some Pete and Jake products, they've been around a long time. Uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, so sometimes you'll be able to find drawings and, uh, and different just plans and patterns. Uh, there's, I think CCR years ago came up with a plans and patterns, make your own, you know, tea bucket. So that stuff's available and you got, do your own drawings. I've seen some really great drawings come, come from customers. This is what I want, and they, they had the ability to do CAD, and they would give us a CAD drawing ready to go. It just here it is, a mechanical drawing. But there's nothing wrong with just some hand-drawn stuff. Put your measurements on it. It works. And uh, I'm not saying we'll share our, our <laughs> book of drawings with you, but there are certain things we do. Um, we do a a bracket kit for a tea, don't we? Yes. So on things like that, we have our brackets for tea bucket. If you want to build your own frame, have at it. You don't need all this equipment. You do need a welder that's going to um, get good penetration and get you a solid weld. Uh, I'm not going to go into welding. Maybe one of these shows will just actually spend time welding. Uh, but there's no way to learn welding without really putting a the torch in your hand or putting a MIG in your hand or a TIG in your hand or doing that, but it can give you some ideas. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Uh, do be afraid of a bad weld. You know if you got a bad weld, if you know what a good one's supposed to look like. Don't grind it and try to hide it with Bondo. Undo it. Undo it and do it again. And um, Practice on some um, metal before you even go to your, your finished frame. Um, and the brackets there's different, uh, we were actually talking about this this morning. This is our bracket for a Vega steering box. Um, I designed it and I, I really designed this with cardboard paper. I, I, I drew my cardboard pieces, I put it up there, I mocked it up, it sits up into the frame. There's probably one on, you can see where it sits right here. This gets built in a jig. It's on. And um, if you did order a bracket kit from us, you would get your radius rod brackets and they would already be bent, you know, so you don't have to have a... So why do we have a bend? That's the number one question when somebody gets a... Uh, uh, one of our bracket kits. They're like, well, one side's only got one bend and the other side's got two. Oh, okay. Well, if, if you look, this one can come around. I've got room on both sides to bend it, and it gives it strength. I mean, without having to put a gusset, it's a one piece, and this will not bend. This is for one. This is three sixteenths. Three eighths. Three eighths. I'm sorry. It's three sixteenths frame and three eighths um, bracket. Now, if you look at it down here, my Vegas steering box comes up into that area. So we've got one bend here, but even at this, we're, we're overkilled on both of these. There's, there's no way that this is going to bend. So that's why you've got one bend there. And, uh, you know, if you did buy our bracket kit, you could buy your, and a lot of this is shipping. Um, two by three, three sixteen steel, two sticks of it. Um, we probably get it for a better price than, than you would from your local steel company because we, the semi truck comes and we unload a bunch of it at a time. But 
What's the average price to ship a frame? Usually 200 bucks to a business on average. And, and the biggest cost of that is the bulk of the size and these frames, these frame rails, which this could be bought at your local uh, steel company. And most towns, even a small town here, has somebody that sells steel. So our brackets, let's just talk about our bracket kit. The spirit bracket kit, when you get your front spring perch, this is these three pieces are welded together, are they not? Or do they come separate? They come, that piece on the bracket kit is separate. Just so we don't provide that. But all these three pieces are together? Yes. Okay, so this is, this is a component piece, just like this would be a component. So instead of getting three pieces, we would already have this put together in the jig. So you just locate it where you want it. And we do not use U-bolts on the front. No, no, we have a, I call it the banana, but it's a bracket that goes on there. We've got a, a banana-shaped piece that's for your lower drag link, or I'm sorry, your lower panhard rod. Because we do get that question, well, where's my U-bolt? Where's my U-bolt kit? So that bracket bolts up there, and uh, I, I guess I could have made the show about our bra <laughs> bracket kit and yeah. put all the pieces, but I didn't. So let's go over this, because this morning... Uh, Josh was asking me, we have a customer that bought a product from another company. And uh, it was supposed to be done, but it didn't have the radiator mounts on it. And it had a wrong location for the, uh, is that right, the cylinder? It yes. has two issues. And he got the body from another company, and he sent it to a body shop that took too long and was that the quote too long and too much money yeah and didn't get him anything done but gave it back to him powder coated which means he now has a frame that doesn't have the brackets it has a bracket in the wrong place and, and it's the, already been powder coated and so, the steering box is in the wrong location oh the steering box okay and so it's, this, it's this, a core barrier type but the the, comp the one company that he was dealing with I happen to see on their website, they have an exact duplicate of this bracket. And I mean, I know, I, I built the thing, so, and there's nothing wrong with copying parts. We don't necessarily copy an exact part from somebody else, but a radius rod's a radius rod, and our radius rods are, what, 30 inches? 27 inches. 27 inches. Without rod ends. Without rod ends. So what, it, that is the same as a couple other companies so and we chose to do that just to stay within a standard so that it, but we could have made it 30 we could have made it 35 we could have, you know you can make it all the way out there so think about your what motor and trans you're going to have this one happens to be set up for it looks like a Chevy a V8 Chevy and a big block small block and a big block are the same as far as well the mount but the big block takes a little bit more room in the front, so a lot of times we're going to add maybe two inches to the front of that. Sometimes we don't, it will fit, but it's close. Depending on where this is placed, the same cross member bracket, if it's placed, say here is a 350, back a little bit is going to be a 400, and back a little bit more is going to be a 700. It'll take a little different bracket altogether for the C4 or the C6. But make sure you know what you want. Get it in there, get it fitting. If you have any concerns, mock up your entire car before you paint it, especially before you send your frame to a powder coater. Um, we happen to put a, our brake pedal onto the, right into the frame. It bolts onto here. It swings, it works good for our body, on, at least on the 23 and the, the 27. Uh, put the bolt all, the stud all the way through, weld it on both sides of it. It comes up through the floor where we need it to come up. There's brackets available. We make one. There's other companies. Again, Pete and Jake's is, it does a lot of good, good stuff. Um, that you can just here it is. It's kind of a universal thing. Put it where it goes. If you didn't want to make your own bracket, this one is set up for rear radius rods. Now you might notice this. Our back bracket is a little bit taller than our front one.
I mean, we do that so that our rear end sits right. We got the whole, it's, we've thought out the car, and these aren't, we've done a lot of these, hundreds, really. Um, so we're not rethinking our 23 every time we do it. You got, are you going to run coilovers? Are you going to run a transverse leaf in the back? Are, are you going to run some kind of a, like I said, I've got one that I'm, we're building just kind of as a shop car. Um, took an old Corvette rear end and making it work. Um, the Thunderbird, the old Thunderbirds, the center section takes a lot of work, but they look kind of cool. You can make those work. Uh, I know Heights makes a real nice uh, independent rear suspension. You can use a Jaguar. Um, what do you want to use? Decide what look do you want, and then just mock it up. If you don't have it exactly right the first time, don't fret. Just do it again. Check it out. Do it. Um, some people enjoy doing this part of the job. Um, it's not our goal at Spirit Cars to force you to to buy our product. To to you know, it's all got to be our stuff. No, if you enjoy, if you're a welder, and if and if you like to do the mock up, and this is the thing that you really like to do, and you don't like to do body work, well, do what you like to do. Make this whole hobby enjoyable and fun. So, on our bracket kit, what do we get? We get. Panhard, don't forget your rear panhard rod too. I mean, if you if you've got coilover shocks and you don't have a rear panhard rod, the back of your frame is just going to flop back and forth. Uh, the front may not go back and forth so much, but it will go the distance of those shackles. So we get these brackets here. Yes. And we get the rear, rear panhard. Rear panhard. We get brackets for the body, body mounts. Um, you can go right through the body. And into the frame, and we used to do that for a long time, but it, this was so much easier. Once we got it lined up with the body on top of the chassis that's rolling, we could go under the body and drill up through these holes, uh, which if you buy a body from us now with doors on it, these holes are already on it because of, we build them on a jig that we roll around, and these are all in the same place, at least on our car. But there's nothing that says this, this bracket can't be right here on your car. But with... One thing you gotta you gotta think of is when you build your own frame, you need to check with your local state to see about titling. Because you can there's a lot of guys on the internet that built their own frames and they can't get it titled. Because they don't have a home built or they can't get a MSO or a serial number because most companies, you know, you've gotta have the frame of a rolling chassis. So think of that before okay. you answer those questions a lot more than I do. Yes. The the aspect I always dealt with the titling is here's how we do it, here's the deal, here's the, here's what's legal, and and we always push it through with either a Spirit, Spirit Cars is a car manufacturer when we issue our 17 digit VIN number, we have our world manufacturer identifier number. You can title a Spirit Car one of two ways. Um, one way is 2016, if we just issue you a certificate of origin, it will be a 2016 Spirit, and it will title that way. That's what it will say on your title. Spirit Cars is also a uh, new car dealer, and uh, with Arkansas legislation, we got passed. Uh, with uh, Arkansas, we'll do a replica title, so we can take this, turn it into a 1923 Ford replica, and this would be a 1927 Ford replica. So we will take our certificate of origin with our VIN numbers, take it to the state, do all the paperwork and all the get all the fees and everything take taken care of, we'll get back and what we'll have is an Arkansas title and on that title it'll call it a 1927 Ford replica and we can sell that car with the title and it will transfer pretty much like a used car because Spirit Cars, the car dealer, will have been the first owner of it and then you would be the second owner but it would transfer just like a used car. So that's the two ways we do it. There's also bonded and a lot of other ways. That every state's different. Uh, but just check, because just check. There's yeah. a couple guys on the on a couple forums there that they've got it. They built their own frame and they bought a body from someone else, and now they can't let. They yeah, can't. you don't want yard art. And we're active, and a lot of people are active. And um, if you can go to SEMA's website, I don't know what kind of access you can get if you're not a member. But um, we've worked with SEMA, and SEMA has some great lobby groups to to really. Uh, work with legislators. We want to build safe cars. We don't want to have 
dangerous vehicles on the road, but we want to be able to take our cars onto the road and drive them legally with legal paperwork, titles, pay our taxes on it, make everybody happy, and we're good to go. So we get these brackets, we get the radius rod brackets, we get the, um, we do both a power and just standard brakes. So we've got a bracket that's for the, the booster, it's a little different, it's a lot bigger round, but this is for standard brakes. But does this bracket come with the brake? Yeah, you get kit? that whole thing whole right piece. there. Yep. So that comes welded, this is welded in a jig. And then you got your uh, your Vegas steering box, motor mounts, and uh, we use a foam block. And uh, a shelled out transmission, we got a couple different combinations. It's, you know, if we're gonna build a car, it's, it's a lot easier to do that. But if you're building your own frame at home, when you get to that point, if you if you can have it set up on jack stands about where it goes, have your body setting on it, if you can take a motor and just and transmission and have it just hanging in there, you know, on your engine hoist about where you want it, and then you could be makes it a whole lot easier to put your mounts in and your transmission mount, and you can build it to match the motor. I mean, you can do it. Uh, you can mechanically engineer it and do it on paper and do the measurements and. And uh, when you're doing something like that, I wouldn't do the Arkansas measurements. You know, this is this is about yay long. Oh, that's about yay long. No, you need to be pretty precise. When this bolt goes through here, you don't want to have to jam that bolt in. You want it to slide right in. When you drop the the back in, you want that bolt to come. Uh, there's two different styles, of, especially on a GM. Uh, one with two holes. This is for the transmission uh, mount. And we use the one with a single hole, and it's got a, a stud coming out the bottom. So we just drop the stud in there and put a nut on the bottom. But since you got a rubber mount, you don't want to have to pull it over or push it that way. I mean, it, it may get in there, it may work, but you're putting undue stress on the, on the motor mounts. Get your chassis built, and I mean, that's always an accomplishment. I, I almost get as much... When I see a 34 sitting on the floor at a Model A or even a 23, it's pretty cool just to see the chassis. You don't see that very often on modern cars in the unibodies. They're just, it's all one component designed to crush and not be repaired or anything like that. This is more of a, I would almost call it a race car technology where it's designed to take an impact and so I don't know. Is there any questions? Is anybody is anybody watching? Where's yeah. <laughs> Are the bolts special hardened steel? We talked about this the other day. I don't trust any marking on any bolt anymore. I don't trust any grade of any steel. Um, the integrity of the industry, it's just not what it probably ought to be, uh, whether it be a, and I'm not just blaming China, but people try to buy the cheapest they can get and for some reason, we use we use supposedly a grade eight bolt. I mean, it's, that's I mean that's what we buy it to be, and so we use a grade eight bolt. You can use a grade five on different things. I mean, it's, it's stainless. I mean, bolts are going to have different shear factors and different um, you know for torque factors and but on our kit we have a bolt package and uh, I don't know how much a bolt package costs it's pretty 60 bucks 60 bucks for a bolt package which it seems like a lot of money but it's not if you go buy some of these bolts especially in grade 8 they're expensive and they all comes in a bag so there'll be a bag with I know when we assemble one we get a bolt kit and open the bag and it tells you okay here's your spring perch bolts here's your bolts for the radius rods here's the bolts for the um, the Vegas steering box, so it's about what eight or ten different ten of them, ten packages of bolts. So you could you could buy a bolt kit, and um, that we're very competitive versus going to a hardware store and buying grade eight bolts. And you can get a uh, bracket kit for about two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks is our bracket kit. So and then save your shipping and build your own thing and have at it. There's no reason you can't build your own frame at home.
So there's a lot of a lot of ways to do it, a lot of options. Where to start? What to do? What do I do? Think about it. Write it down. Just like we have a book full of notes. It doesn't matter if you're just building one car. Think about it. What is my front end? What is I need all these component parts. Where are they going to be? It doesn't have to be a great drawing, but make yourself at least a drawing so you don't forget any key component and get it back from the powder coater and go, oh, crud, what am I going to do now? i got to undo it and send it back. So, I think that's about it for today. We have my friend Ernie. I don't know, Ernie, are you watching? I don't know if Ernie's watching any. Hot Rod Man. I don't know if they get internet where he lives. Oh. <laughs> he He's is in moved. the woods. He is he has moved out into the into the national forest up Missouri. So sometimes it's pretty good. This is called Pass It On. Ernie Gilcrease. We call him the Hot Rod Man around here. So this is a lot of quotes and sayings from him. Each moment is a gift. Accept the gift. And enjoy the present. And I got Eddie, fast Eddie, quick, get him, get him, get him. Ah, no, you need to face again. It must be lunch over. Did I run this thing long today? I guess you did. Oh, man, are we a half hour into this? Eddie's our awesome upholstery guy, fast Eddie. Um, so I read this. Each gift is, each moment is a gift. Accept the gift and enjoy the present. So for today, if you enjoyed this and want to catch us live, there's a follow button only while you're watching it live. So I'm going to give you about a second to look down on the bottom. It's probably on the left down there. Or the... I didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> That's because this is virtual reality yeah. down, virtual reality at my foot. So if you push that follow button only while we're live, uh, I think it notifies you when we go live. And we'll do this occasionally at different times other than 11.05. Um, and when you're, if you're watching this and it's been uploaded to the website, there is no button to, to follow, at least right now. Facebook is constantly changing. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, hopefully, I just didn't ramble for 20 minutes or so. I hopefully you got something out of this. Um, and tomorrow, we had this, we've been doing a lot of Larry stuff. Mo gave us a call and said he wanted to buy Curly a car. So we've got this interesting Curly project coming up. So keep watching. <laughs>